Hi, I'm Aaron, and this is Exploring Elixir, where we look at interesting language features, libraries, and design patterns from the world of Elixir and the Beam Virtual Machine. In this episode, we're going to look at some new debugging techniques that come with Elixir 1.5. So for the purpose of this and the next video, in fact, I've written this small little module that implements the Colatz conjecture. If you want to read more about that interesting bit of math, you can visit Wikipedia here. So what this does, is it takes integers either in a list as here or as bare naked integers here, have to be greater than zero, and it passes it through this recursive um, algorithm where it looks and if it's an even number, it divides it by two puts it back in. If it's an odd number, it multiplies by three, adds one, and does the same. And the Colatz conjecture says that this will always end up converging to the value of one. So that's really cool. So let's start playing with this. And as usual, I've, I've put some bugs in here for us to find and, and see if we can solve. So first of all, uh, there's the, in previous versions, there's the dreaded no matching function header message and you have to go around and try and find which head, which, you know, function header you thought should match and why it didn't. Um, and this is improved in, in 1.5. So we can try running this with the value of say zero and it will say no function clause matching. And what's beautiful is it now tells us both the arguments that were passed in. I mean, it's obvious here because we're calling it directly, but if this is somewhere deep in your application, um, we might not see that so easily. So it tells us what the arguments were. Um, and then it tells us the function clauses it tried and failed to match on. So obviously zero is not an empty list. Zero is not a list. It is an integer. So you can see that that's actually in black. It passed that guard value, but it failed the greater than zero. I mean, and this is exactly what we see in our code here. So this is really nice. It, it should make um, looking for these kinds of errors a lot easier in the future. Another nice little tool that comes in IX in 1.5 for debugging um, is the ability to open files directly. So I could open the file using this kind of syntax and it opens it up in my editor, which is not all that interesting if you just put the file name in. Where it really gets interesting is I can just put in the name of a module or even the name of a function and it will open up the file to that function. That's so useful, especially if you've got a large project or you're looking for code in libraries and dependencies. This is gonna make things so much easier just to jump around quickly and see what's what and what's going on. Okay, so let's go hunting for our, our, our first bug. And um, we know that zero doesn't work. Uh, let's try two. And we get a bad argument in arithmetic expression and it points us to line 35 and then line 22. So we look at line 35, we're getting an arithmetic error here. I mean, that's really weird, right? I mean, why would this be giving us an arithmetic error and line 22 is just the first call in. So. This is the kind of, of bug that can really like do your head in uh, as you stare at the screen blankly. Um, but so what we have the ability to do now is right from within IAX, we can use a very simple debugging technique called pry and we can set breakpoints. So let's set a breakpoint. Um, that's actually with an exclamation mark there on Colat's steps. So this is not a public function, but we can put breakpoints on it in, while we're running in IEX anyways. So what I'm going to request here, I'm just gonna put some breaks on here. Oops, I need to tell it what arity. Um, it's arity two, indeed. Now I can ask for all the breakpoints I have, and this will list in a table all the breakpoints that I've got going on. So I've got a breakpoint on step, so there are already two, and I've got two pending stops. What this means is that when we start our code again, every time it hits this function, it's going to pause and we're gonna be able to look into our code. And we've already set it up to stop twice. So this is really nice for like recursive functions where it doesn't happen in the first iteration, uh, but maybe the 10th or the 20th or whatever. And you can set as many stops as you want. You can reset them uh, as well later on with reset break or calling breaks again also works. Okay, so we've set a break point here. Let's try that bad call again. All right, it's a little hard to read in my background, so I'm gonna do where am I? Where am I is really nice because you might have be doing a lot of exploration um, since you've seen the, the initial error and you're like, okay, where am I in the code again? Just type where am I, it tells you. And 
for me, it's nice because it also is a little easier to read with my light gray background. So we can see, okay, we're, we're here. Um, okay, let's see what the value of value is and what's the value of step count. Everything looks fine, right? Um, so let's do value divided by two. And maybe we see a problem jumping out at us. And if we don't, we probably can if we try the guard value. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, I must require it because I'm running this from inside of IX. Great. And now I'm getting that bad argument in arithmetic expression. Ah, because it's a floating point value I'm getting here. And now we understand why it was failing here, because this is calling steps with the value that was passed in, which we know is going to be this 1.0, because 2 is even, so it's going to divide by 2, it's going to get 1.0, 1.0 is going to be passed in here, 3 times that plus 1, it's going to get a floating point value into this is even, so it's not even going to get into this function. This would have been really hard to spot just from the backtrace alone. We've been staring at why is it this line? Well, because it actually fails up here. So how do we fix this? Very simple. We already have the integer module imported, so we can just say floor div. This will give us an integer every time. Right now, before we go and check our, our, our fix, we can see our, our breakpoints, no breakpoints set because we've used them all up at the moment. Um, so what we can do, we're all done. We could of course set more breakpoints, explore more function calls or whatever, but we're good, we're done here I think. So we're gonna respawn and this is gonna put us back into the interactive session and um, it gives us an error, fine. Let's, now that we've done our, our fix, just make sure this is, uh, there we are, recompiled, good. Let's call that again, and we get our value back. So this is a really nice way of just doing really quick on the spot debugging. What's nice is that you can set these breakpoints anywhere in your code. So if you have like a Phoenix application, you can put these in your, wherever it hits your views or your models or what have you. Um, and you can actually see quite deep in your code while it's running things like what is the con value. So you just run, you know, ix s um, uh, PHX server or Phoenix server, depending on which version of Phoenix you're running. So it's running in the shell and then you just set breakpoints and see exactly what is going on. Uh, very nice lightweight tool that's built right into IX um, in 1.5. So I hope you found that enlightening and interesting and that you look forward to playing with it as much as I have enjoyed playing with it so far. Um, and I will see you in the next episode where we're going to take a look at property testing this exact same module.